Hi, YouTube. BB here. I have a lot of topics I want to talk about. I guess today's topic is going to be... Old Seattle. Old Seattle in the early 2000s to the mid 2000s. 2003 through... Twenty fourteen. So let's go with about ten and a half years. 2003 to early 2014. Ten and a half year window of old Seattle. What do I remember? What do you remember? What do you remember? Post in the comments below. What I remember is the old library on 5th and Spring before the big 12-story Seattle Central Library was built. I remember it had like a 1960s architecture and it was a lot of white and beige. It's just a blip. You know what else I remember? Microfish. Microfish and microfilm machines before computers. I remember... Uh, carbon copy, photocopy machine things that were like manual. You, you plugged it into the electrical outlet, but you used it like old school credit card slider machine things from the 90s. There was also like a, a photocopier made for carbon paper. Like the yellow, blue, and pink carbon paper, carbon copy. I remember, and it it wasn't a standard photocopy machine. It was, it was like the size of a laptop, and weighed maybe like ten pounds. What else do I remember? I remember Bucket Guy. Do you remember Bucket Guy? He was the one who who played drums on buckets. On the corner of 5th and Pine, or 4th and Pine. 4th and Pine. 5th? No, he was on 5th and Pine. Downtown Seattle. Bucket guy. My husband and I were discussing this. Um, he disappeared, I guess, from like 2014 or 2015 was the last I saw of Bucket guy. Maybe 2016. But as soon as Bucket Guy disappeared, downtown Seattle turned to fucking shit. Do you remember the Sarge? If you hung out and walked around and you always saw the same homeless guy dressed as a pirate in a really old, worn-out wheelchair from a hospital that, you know, he just stole one day and never returned. His name was the Sarge. He used to be on 5th and Pine outside Nordstrom, and sometimes he would be outside Macy's, and sometimes you could find him at Seattle Center. Early 2000s. What else? What else is there? Oh, Bishnuts. Bishnuts was this guy who had a portable DJ booth at Westlake Park. And I think he probably paid for a, a storage space um, over behind Seas Candy and the hot dog stand. He had this portable DJ booth. His name was Bishnuts. DJ, Bish, DJ Bishnuts. B-I-S-H-N-U-T-Z. He was fun. It was back in the day when the Westlake Park stairs were not taken by the jugglers, but rather by eat punk, emo, and scene kids. What else am I missing? What else am I missing? Oh, you can hear Bucket Guy from Pike Place Market all the way up to the Capitol Hill overpass. Yeah.
And as soon as Bucket Guy disappeared, it's like nothing was the same anymore downtown. Because if you couldn't hear the echo of Bucket Guy playing his bucket drums, then you knew something was wrong. And it hasn't been the same since. Um, when uh, you could go to Pike Place Market and it wasn't crowded and you could throw a fish. Not just watch the fish be thrown, but you could literally ask. And you might wait five to ten minutes, but they would let you behind the counter and they would let you throw a fish. And then they would let you catch a fish. Man, that was fun. I, I used to do that maybe once a year. And I would go down to Pike Place Market on like a Tuesday or Wednesday morning. Just as it was opening. And I would get to throw a fish. I love doing that. I miss going down the uh, the, the Benavoria State, Benavoria Hall stairs. Um over on 2nd and, uh, 2nd University or 2nd and Union. There were the stairs that went between 2nd and 1st. I know the stairs are still there, but I haven't walked down those stairs in years. Just because of all the homeless, all the crazies, all the mentally ill people, all the dangerous people in downtown Seattle. There's, there's no reason for me to go to downtown. I remember when Wajmaya was hot. Now it's not. It's just trash. I remember once a month throughout my teen years and my early 20s, I would treat myself to the food court at Wajmaya. Do you remember the food court at Westlake Mall? I do. Do you know what it turned into? It turned into emptiness. And then they tried to make it into a different kind of food court where it only had like two or three different cafes and just... A masses of tables and chairs everywhere. You know what I miss when there were three, three McDonald's in downtown Seattle. Now there's none. I mean, there's one, the one at Third and Pine, but it has a walk-up window and you can't go inside anymore. That's really fucked up. I don't even know if it's open, open, or if it's permanently closed. I have no idea. <sighs> so anyways, that's my Seattle rant. Oh, here's another one. The underground tunnels. And I don't mean the metro tunnel. I mean the ability to stay entirely on Pike, Pine, 4th and 5th from one department store to another department store, from one building to the other side show attraction to the other tourist attraction without going above ground. If you remember that, you're awesome. The, uh, the Fifth Avenue Theater had a tunnel entrance to below, and then there was another one over by where Mod Pizza used to be on University and 7th. No, 6th and University. There was the Mod Pizza and the Elephant and Castle restaurant, and you could go underneath Mod Pizza, and there would be the tunnel entrance that would lead you to the Fifth Avenue Theater underground tunnel. And that was cool. There used to be huge murals of historic downtown Seattle on the walls throughout the whole length that you would walk. There were bike racks. There were little... Uh, coffee shop, there's a cafe, there were lots of tourist attraction kind of uh, pamphlet display units with a billion pamphlets. You, it's kind of, you see it like motels or hotels on the highway. Yeah. Another tunnel was accessible via the Columbia, the, the Columbia Building Tower, and I think I only saw that tunnel once. Yeah. And then 
There was another tunnel entrance somewhere on First Avenue, but I don't remember which building it was. Oh, maybe it was Nordstrom Rack. Uh, maybe. Oh, Nordstrom Rack. Yeah, that went out of business in like 2015, 2016. And it's still empty to this day. I think it became an H Mart temporarily. And then H Mart was like, yeah, no, Seattle crazies, they're too crazy for us. We're leaving. I, I think it lasted just less than a year. Yeah. Uh, oh, the Seattle Holocaust Museum. That did not last. Somewhere on First Avenue. And it was by, like, appointment only. You couldn't even just be a tourist and go into the Seattle Holocaust Museum. You had to make an appointment ahead of time. It wasn't even free, to, you know, with the whole museum one Thursday a month free admission like a lot of our museums do. The Fry Museum, not open anymore. The uh, the Seattle Art Museum, they don't do that Thursday, one Thursday a month free admission thing anymore. The Sheraton Hotel hasn't done the gingerbread houses at Christmas time since 20, 2017. 2017 was the last time the Sheraton Hotel in downtown Seattle did its annual gingerbread house competition and walkthrough. I yearn for old Seattle. I yearn for Safeco Field to be Safeco Field and not T-Mobile Park. I yearn for Dave Niehaus's voice to come back. I yearn for Bucket Guy to return to Fifth and Pine. I yearn for Westlake Park to go back to being safe instead of sketchy or dangerous. I yearn for all the old fun stuff of Seattle to exist. I just want my old Seattle back, but that's not going to happen. Times have changed. People change. People leave. I miss the past. Oh well, whatever. So anyways, that's my rant. Much longer than I intended it to be. But I miss Seattle. Thanks for coming to my rant. Stick around and stay tuned for more. Thank you.